Hi, I'm Christopher Arndt, and today I'm going to be showing you how to apply noise reduction techniques in Adobe Audition. To begin, I want to explain that most high-quality videos and audio don't reach the consumer in the same condition they were recorded. In video, we have editing and color grading techniques to do this, and in audio we have the various effects that Audition provides us. Our first step in editing audio should be eliminating any pesky background noise. This is a useful tool in journalism because it allows for clean interviews and less jarring cuts between audio clips. There are several tools to reduce noise in Audition, and the first one I want to demonstrate is a noise reduction process. This effect comes in two parts, noise print capture and the effect itself. Both can be found under Effects, Noise Reduction Restoration, and they should be at the top of the list. This effect works by identifying certain frequencies as noise and then cutting them out from any audio you apply the effect to. But in order for the program to know which sounds are noise and which aren't, you need to identify them through a noise print. Now, just because this effect exists doesn't mean you have an excuse to slack on your recording. In fact, it means there are more steps to follow when recording. The best way to build yourself a noise print is to take 10 or 15 seconds at the beginning of recording to pick up any room noise. You'll notice the clip I have loaded up has a long dead zone at the beginning. This dead zone is the ambient noise of my recording room. Now let's just listen to that for a second. So you can hear what sounds like the hum of an air conditioner. This sound will consistently play throughout my recording. So what I'll do is highlight that entire section and open up the noise reduction process by pressing Ctrl Shift P. A window will pop up. This is the main noise reduction window. It asks us to capture a noise print, so let's quickly press the Capture Noise Print button. Once you do that, a graph will show up. The graph shows your high and low frequencies as well as the threshold for your noise reduction. Below that are your main sliders. The first sets the threshold for the effect. You'll see as I move it left and right, the green threshold line adjusts. After that is the intensity of the effect, how many decibels you reduce the noise by. We'll also open up the advanced settings. Under this tab, all sorts of adjustments can be made to this effect. I'll get into all of these functions in a moment, but I do want to point out an important one, the FFT. FFT essentially sets the precision of your effect and the noise print you capture. The higher it's set, the more detail you pick up in your noise print. To start, we'll set this on the lower end at 2048. Then, making sure our room noise is highlighted, we'll click Capture Noise Print. Now let's listen to what the default settings of this effect do with our audio. Click Select Entire File, and then hit space to play the clip. This is a test recording for the Adobe Audition Audio Reduction Tutorial Part 1. So this sounds terrible, but we can fix it. Let's talk about the settings that this effect has. Under the Advanced Setting tab, we have Spectral Decay Rate. This setting selects how many frequencies that fall below our threshold are processed. Setting it too low results in a lot of bubbly noise, which we call artifacts. And setting it too high often leaves too much noise in the clip. Usually, values between 40 and 75 work best. Next, there's smoothing. Smoothing evens out the variances in your noise signal. Setting it higher reduces artifacts, but increases the overall broadband noise of your clip. Precision Factor controls changes in amplitude. You typically want to set it between 5 and 10 and add an odd number. The lower the setting, the less precise the effect will be, often leading to sudden drops in volume. Setting it higher than 10 makes little difference in quality but increases processing time. I tend to leave it around 7. Transition Width basically applies gates to audio that falls below your threshold. Setting it low will cut audio off quickly when it's below the threshold, and setting it high will apply a steady decrease in your audio. Each side of this coin has its uses, but I tend to leave it in the middle. Now that we have all these details out of the way, let's get to fixing this audio. 
We've already captured the noise print, so let's modify the settings. I'm going to set the noise reduction just below 100% at about 90 and reduce it by 10 decibels. You don't typically want to set your reduction higher than this. The point of starting at a low FFT setting is that as we increase the detail of our noise print, we make small reductions until the noise is gone. Now, playing the audio back with these settings, we can already hear a drastic change in quality. This is a test recording for the Adobe Audition audio reduction tutorial, but let's push it a bit further. Let's set the spectral decay to 55%, smoothing to 100, and the transition width to 50. If you want to hear the effect you're having on the audio, you can click Output Noise Only and play the clip. This allows you to hear how much of the noise and the audio you want to keep you're affecting. If you hear too much of the good stuff, you should reduce your settings. And if you hear very little noise, try increasing the settings. You can also turn off the effect by clicking the power button in the bottom corner. This lets you hear the original audio versus the affected audio. This is a test recording for the Adobe Audition Audio Reduction Tutorial Part 1. Now, I think these settings are pretty good, so let's click Apply and let it process. Of course, we aren't done, there's still some noise we want to eliminate. So again, we're going to highlight our room noise at the beginning of the clip, open the noise reduction process, and change our FFT to 4096. Then we capture our noise print. Keeping our settings the same as last time, let's click Select Entire File and then play the clip. This is a test recording for the Adobe Audition Audio Reduction Tutorial Part 1. I think this is a pretty good adjustment. We could probably fine tune it, but it will serve the purposes of the video as it is. So let's click Apply. We're going to repeat this step once more. Highlight the room noise, open the effect, set our FFT one setting higher, this time to 8192, then we capture our noise print. Select the entire file and listen to the clip. This is a test recording for the Adobe Audition Audio Reduction Tutorial Part 1. And this time the noise is gone. So let's hit apply one last time. And there you have it. We've eliminated the room noise in this audio clip. Now let's compare the original audio to the reduced audio one last time. The original. This is a test recording for the Adobe Audition Audio Reduction Tutorial Part 1. The reduced version. This is a test recording for the Adobe Audition Audio Reduction Tutorial Part 1. Of course, you will probably have to change your settings for your own audio, but now you should have an understanding of what settings affect what and the basic idea of how to use this process. And again, this tool is no excuse for poor quality recording. In the next tutorial, I'll be showing you how to eliminate annoying frequencies from your audio using the parametric equalizer. This has been Christopher Arndt. Best of luck with your editing.